So in possibly the least surprising headline of 2022, Auburn is firing head football coach Brian Harson. And if you've kept up with this saga, it has been a wild ride. One, we need to break down, but in firing Brian Harson, Auburn puts themselves in a really interesting situation. One I don't think many people have touched on, and because of that, we've got to dive into it. But before we can, as always, y'all know the drill. I need to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Give me a Y for yes and for no. Are you surprised Auburn has fired Brian Harson? Let me know what you're thinking. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification as I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed the content, be sure to like and comment down below. Those interactions may seem small, but they are massive to content creators such as myself. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And as I said in the intro, though I don't find this surprising, I'm really interested in hearing from all of you. So if you are someone that finds this surprising, let me know why. I'd be super interested in hearing from you. And I think there are going to be a lot of people out there that may not be surprised that Brian Harson is being fired, but are being surprised as to when he's being fired. That it's during the season. Why not before? Why not after? And in most cases, look, I hear you. We've talked about this on the channel at length, that one of the biggest things in college football that teams crave is consistency because recruiting is huge in college football. And for recruiting, you want consistency. You want to be a steady ship. You want to be someone that people can hedge their bets on and feel good doing so. The last thing you want if you're a college football institution is chaos when you're trying to recruit because there are far too many institutions that are playing good football, winning football, developing, that are steady ships in the night. And unfortunately, if you're Auburn under Brian Harson, you have not been a steady ship in the night. And currently right now, Auburn ranks 12th out of 14 SEC teams in recruiting. So though, yes, a lot of the times waiting can be good because you want to maintain as much consistency as you can. In the event of Auburn, I think trying to jumpstart your recruiting class is probably the best case scenario. Trying to get some excitement in there, trying to go in a new direction is probably exactly what you need. Because one thing we need to acknowledge when it comes to Brian Harson and recruiting is that they didn't sign anybody on National Signing Day, and that was a real big blow to the Auburn fan base, especially being the state that you're in. You're in the state of Alabama. Right across the street is Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide. We know what they do on the field, but they are the gold standard when it comes to college football recruiting. On National Signing Day, while they're signing an absolute haul, Auburn fans had to sit and they had to watch because they didn't get anybody, and that couldn't have sat well with the fan base. But that is not where the drama would end, because in the offseason, those in power around the institution, those that may not have decision-making capabilities, but can certainly influence decision-making capabilities, reportedly attempted to launch a coup against Brian Harson. Now, personally, I think Brian Harson probably should have been let go right then and there. Nothing to do with the coup or to do with his coaching ability, but at the point where those in power, those that can influence influence decision-making capabilities once you've gone that bad, it's not going to work out. I don't think we can point to too many marriages in college football that have been able to survive something like that. So at the point when that happens, it's pretty clear that you're on borrowed time. So that's why I say I don't find it surprising that Auburn is parting ways with Brian Harson. The results on the field have not been there. They have not looked like a consistent good college football team. Results in recruiting have not been there. And when you want to be a steady force, a sailing ship in the night that's just going through smooth as butter, that's not at all what we've seen Auburn be. So no, I'm not surprised that Auburn has let go of Brian Harson. but we do need to turn our attention into the implications of this. Because there are a lot of institutions right now that are going to be on the head coach search. There's Nebraska, there's Arizona State, and now there's Auburn. But one thing about Auburn is if you're a prospective head coach looking at these opportunities, one thing we need to realize, the way Auburn has handled this could be a bit of a barrier. And I'm not saying it's going to prevent them from getting their hire. I'm not saying that at all. One thing we need to acknowledge, Auburn's a national brand. They're a brand that has a national championship in the past 10 years. They're a brand that's in the SEC, and they're in a loaded state for talent and in a loaded region. So if you can get them right, you're going to have a lot of praise. You have a lot of capabilities. It's just about getting it to that point. However, one thing we also need to acknowledge on the flip side is you're going to be going up against LSU, Texas A&M, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Alabama on a year-in, year-out basis. 
that's not an easy thing to do. And I understand some of those teams I named are chaotic as well, such as a Texas A&M, but Texas A&M is talented. The SEC, even if a team is chaotic, they're still talented. That makes it a very tough situation to try and walk into, given the past two years that the Auburn fan base has seen. So whenever you're looking at who could take this job, there are several names, and especially with the new AD, which, by the way, once Auburn got rid of the AD that had hired Brian Harson, I think that was really the writing on the wall. His time was officially over. It was really just a matter of time. But one thing we have got to acknowledge before we can even get to who the new face of Auburn could be, have they put themselves in a bad position? By handling the Brian Harson situation like this, have they made their destination an undesirable destination? When you look at Nebraska, Nebraska may not be doing well, but they didn't have people that could influence decision makers attempt to launch a coup against the head coach, or at least as far as we're aware, because this Auburn situation took social media by storm. And for about a month, that's all you saw when you got on Twitter. And it's something we've got to think about. Because if you're a head coach, if you're not even thinking about coaching, let's put this in terms of real world application for most of us. You're going in there for a job. It's a job you'd like. You have three or four offers, all for analogous jobs. But the one institution you just got out of, they said, hey, yeah, by the way, the last guy, it just didn't work. And instead of just firing him, we launched a whole internal thing to try and get him gone. That didn't work. We held on to him for a while. And then we just kind of waited until he'd messed up enough to where we could let him go. That's not going to inspire a ton of confidence if you have three or four other offers that that didn't happen. That's the situation we've got to keep at the forefront of our mind. I'm not saying it's going to prevent them from making a hire, but it does make this situation a lot more interesting because Auburn, they got to get it right. I can't wait to hear from all of you. Hop down to the comments. Let me know what you're thinking about this. That's it. See you.